Now let's move on to discuss the other major class of cells in the nervous system, the neuroglia, including the neuroglia of the central nervous system, as well as the neuroglia of the peripheral nervous system. The neuroglia of the central nervous system. Glial cells provide the environment required for neurons to perform their functions. Glial cells perform functions such as myelinating neurons, regulating the nutrients and gases in the extracellular environment, and participating in the repair process. The glial cells found in the central nervous system are epidymal cells, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and microglia. Astrocytes are a major glial cell in the central nervous system. They're the most numerous type, and the functions of astrocytes include, number one, providing structural support for neurons. Astrocytes are involved in the growth and interconnection of developing neurons. They also support neurons through their extensive microfilaments. Number two is modifying the extracellular environment. The large surface area of astrocytes facilitate the absorption and exchange of ions and nutrients. Number three, maintaining the blood-brain barrier. Astrocyte projections onto the endothelial cells along with adhesion molecules, make an effective barrier. And number four, repair neuronal damage in the central nervous system. Oligodendrocytes. These form the myelin sheath around the axons of certain neurons in the central nervous system. They produce the myelin sheath which wraps around the axon and contains fatty membranes. Myelin increases the electrical conductivity of the axon and allows the signal to travel long distances. The nodes of Ranvier are the gaps in the myelin which cause the electrical signal to jump from one of these gaps in the myelin to the next. The following is a clinical note on tumors of the central nervous system or CNS. Central nervous system tumors lead to approximately 90,000 deaths per year in the United States. Cancers that arise in the central nervous system can either be primary, which arise there, or metastatic, which spread from elsewhere in the body. Primary cancers of the central nervous system account for approximately 75% of cases. CNS cancers can occur in abnormal neurons in pediatric patients in which the brain and spinal cord are growing and developing. The symptoms depend on the location of the cancer, within the brain or spinal cord, and treatment includes surgery if possible, radiation, and chemotherapy. The other types of glial cells in the central nervous system are the microglia and ependymal cells. The smallest type are the microglial cells, and they appear early in embryonic development. They migrate into the central nervous system during development and function as phagocytic cells. These cells engulf cellular debris and pathogens to protect the neurons. Ependymal cells are special epithelial cells that line the ventricles of the brain and spinal cord. The chambers in these areas help to contain the cerebral spinal fluid, which protects the central nervous system and provides a means to circulate gases and nutrients to the different cells in the nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, the neuroglia consists of satellite cells and Schwann cells. The peripheral nerves contain neuron cell bodies that are in the peripheral ganglia surrounded by satellite cells. Schwann cells. Myelin insulates the axon and speeds up the conduction of action potentials along nerves. This is accomplished in part by limiting the charge leakage across the membrane. In the peripheral nervous system, the myelin sheath is made up by Schwann cells. The neurolemma is the outermost layer of Schwann cells that surrounds the axon of neurons in the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is myelinated by oligodendrocytes and therefore does not have a neurolemma. The other type of glial cells in the peripheral nervous system are the satellite cells. These are located in the peripheral nervous system and they surround the peripheral ganglia where they regulate the exchange of nutrients between the neuron and the extracellular fluid. 
They also form a barrier around the neurons in the peripheral ganglia and isolate them. The following is a clinical note on demyelination. Demyelination is a condition in which the normal myelin coating of an axon in the nervous system is either damaged or absent. The different causes of demyelination include infection, autoimmune diseases, exposure to certain organophosphates, multiple sclerosis, and leukodystrophies. The symptoms of demyelination can include impairments of sensation, impairments of movement, and changes in brain function. The treatment for demyelination can have a very poor response depending on the severity and cause. Treatments for multiple sclerosis include immune modulator drugs such as interferon, immunosuppressant drugs, and monoclonal antibody treatment to reduce the efflux of immune cells from the brain vasculature into the brain tissue. The nervous system has a certain capacity for repair after injury. The presence of the neurolemma or Schwann cell layer around axon permits neuronal repair within the peripheral nervous system. Nerve damage, either from a crush injury or a transection, results in the loss of continuity of function along the axon, as well as the generation of the nerve fiber downstream from the site of injury. After this, Schwann cells in the distal end of the stump proliferate and extend along the axonal tract. Growth cones from the sprouting cells grow through the Schwann cell tract and eventually re innervate the target muscle. Clinical Challenge Exam Question Glial cells perform many different functions to support and regulate neurons in the nervous system. Which of the following is not a function of a glial cell? A. To myelinate dendrites and axons. B. Function in the repair of peripheral nerves. C. Engulf cellular debris and foreign pathogens. D. Modify the extracellular fluid environment around neurons. Or E. Line the ventricles of the brain to help contain the cerebral spinal fluid. Here's the answer to the question. This question tests your knowledge of the functions of glial cells in the central and peripheral nervous system. The correct answer for this question was A. Myelinate dendrites and axons. Glial cells do not myelinate dendrites, only the axon of a neuron. Let's continue with nerve injury and nerve repair. After an injury to a neuron, such as a transection, the nerve may or may not re-establish synapses to function normally. When an entire nerve is cut or severely damaged, typically a portion of the axons will extend to re-establish the synapses, and this leads to permanent nerve damage. Damage in the central nervous system can lead to activation and division of astrocytes, and this can lead to the formation of non-functional scar tissue. Now let's move on to discuss organization of the nervous system, including neuronal processing. Let's begin this section by discussing neuronal processing. The neural information that travels through the neurons in the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system must be processed in order to be acted on. In order to facilitate this, the central nervous system contains pools of neurons that are interconnected and share similar functions. This is also known as a neuronal circuit. The interconnected neurons have inputs or signaling that make up a recognizable circuit. The patterns of the neuronal pool form the neural circuit and it can process information in the following ways. Divergent processing, convergent processing, serial and parallel processing, as well as reverberation. Let's discuss the different processing methods. In divergent processing, information is passed from one neuron or one neuron pool to multiples. An example of this would be incoming sensory information which is quickly spread to multiple regions of the brain and spinal cord. When more than one presynaptic neuron synapses on the same postsynaptic neuron, this is an example of convergent processing. An example of this 
will be the control of the muscular actions of the diaphragm in breathing being controlled by the respiratory center in the brainstem. Serial processing involves the passage of information in a stepwise manner from one pool of neurons to another. The central nervous system also performs parallel processing, where the same input information is processed at more than one site simultaneously. In reverberation, the information passes back through collateral neurons and influences the source of the incoming information flow. This is similar to a biofeedback mechanism. This can either be excitatory or inhibitory in nature. Now we'll discuss the organization of the nervous system. The image on the left of the slide depicts the flow of information through the brain, midbrain, medulla, brainstem, into the cervical and thoracic spinal cord and out through the peripheral nervous system to the skeletal muscle. The actions of skeletal muscles and organ systems are controlled by the central nervous system and this requires specific pathways and connections. The neurons in both the central and peripheral nervous systems are arranged anatomically to serve this function. The connections of the nervous system. The brain and spinal cord contain two types of neuronal tissue, gray matter and white matter. The white matter contains neurons and neuron cell bodies whereas the gray matter is composed mostly of bundles of myelinated axons. The gray matter of the brain makes up the higher brain centers for processing and incoming neuronal information. These form specific nuclei in the brain and processing centers. The information processed in these centers of the brain is delivered through white matter tracts in the spinal cord. In the brain and throughout the spinal cord, the white matter tracts, both ascending and descending, transmit neuronal information. The ascending tracts transmit information from the sensory neurons up to the brain centers for processing, and the descending tracts transmit motor impulses, an example is the corticospinal motor tract, and within the spinal cord these tracts are organized to form columns. The peripheral nervous system contains neuronal cell bodies in the gray matter ganglia. The white matter in the peripheral nervous system contains the axons that transmit sensory and motor impulses. The effector or motor neurons stimulate the muscle or organ system to perform its function. 